Well, I think the distribution of information has changed so radically over the last couple hundred years, and particularly over the last 20. P people are more inclined to entertain these concepts of science and to take in the understanding of what has been observed and documented and, yeah. and written about among scholars and academics. And there's more, there's more people accepting that. If you look yeah. at the number of agnostic people now as opposed to 20, 30 years ago, it's, it's, it's rising. It's changing. And I think there's also, because of you and because of Neil deGrasse Tyson and, you know, Sean Carroll and all these other people that are public intellectuals that are discussing this kind of stuff, people like myself have a far greater understanding of this than I think people did 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. And that trend is continuing, I think, in a very good direction. It's stuff we've discovered. It's not stuff that someone made up. Right? We, the, we, we, you know, we understand nuclear physics. We can build nuclear reactors, for example. So we understand the physics of stars. So we, we understand that the stars built the carbon and oxygen, and we know how they did it. Um, we can see it, because as I said before, we can, if you look far out into the universe, you're looking way back in time. And as you look back in time, you see less carbon and less oxygen. So we have a direct observation that in the earliest universe there wasn't any because <laughs> we can see it and now we see that there is some and we know how it was made so i think it's always it's important to um be humble when you're talking about science and you're not saying this is the way that it is i mean <laughs> you are in a sense but you know it's not it's not able to answer ultimate questions at the moment it's not able to answer even whether the universe had a beginning or not we don't even know that and I gave a talk to, um, I was asked to give a talk to some bishops in the UK about cosmology. And I said, yeah, that'd be great fun. And so I went and gave him this talk. And, and, and at the end, I said, I've got some questions. So if the universe is eternal, and it might be, it might not have had a beginning. If it's eternal, what place is there for a creator? You know, that's, that's a good question. Right. They didn't, they didn't have an answer, of course, right? An eternal but, creator. But yeah, but I, I think that these, it might be eternal, right. and we might discover that. So we don't, we don't know at the moment, but we might. But I think that in the 21st century, it, religion needs to operate within that framework. If it's going, if it's going to operate, there are still great mysteries, and it is appropriate to think about what it means to be human. And I'm giving you my view of what it means. But but it, I don't think the problem comes when you when you're your theology or your philosophy forces you to deny some facts, some measurement. Now, these things are measurements. We, we, we're not saying, it's not my opinion the universe is 13.8 billion years old. We measured it. It's like having an opinion between the distance from LA to New York. Now, you can't have an opinion on that. Right. <laughs> we know what it is. <laughs> and it's the same, right. you know, it's like, you know, that these things, you know, the people say the Earth's flat or whatever. That, so it isn't, and we've measured it. So it's just stop it. You know, so but that doesn't mean you can't be spiritual and you can't be religious. I would say it doesn't mean you can't believe in God or gods. Or it, it, that's not ruled out. 